Hi guys, welcome to part one of our Python Scrapey beginner series. In this series, we'll be going through how to scrape a website using the Python Scrapey framework and how to use different features that come with this framework. We hope that by the end of the series, you'll have a good idea of how to scrape websites using Python Scrapey. So in this video, we're going to go through how to create a Scrapey project, how to create a Scrapey spider, how to select data from the website, how to run the spider, and how to navigate between web pages programmatically. So let's get started. So there's a few prerequisites that you need to get going. One is we presume you have Visual Studio Code or another code editor already to edit the code. Two, you need to have Python already installed. You need to also have a Python virtual environment installed and you need to have Scrapey installed. So if you don't have those already installed, just pause the video now and get that set up and ready to go first. We'll also have uh, links in the description on how you can get those bits and pieces set up. This is the website that we're going to be scraping. It's uh, chocolate.co.uk. It's just a simple chocolate e-commerce website. And what we're going to be doing is just scraping the product data from this website. Now let's move to our code editor and get started. So we're going to just first create a Scrapey project with Scrapey start project. And we're going to call our chocolate scraper. So Scrapey start project chocolate scraper. And as you can see, new Scrapey project, Chocolate Scraper, has been created. We're now going to create our spider next. So let's just CD into our Chocolate Scraper. And we're now just going to do a Scrapey Gen Spider command. So it's going to be Scrapey Gen Spider, Chocolate Spider. Chocolate Spider is the name of our spider and chocolate.co.uk is the website we're going to be scraping. So you need these four bits, Scrapey, Gen Spider, Chocolate Spider, chocolate.co.uk. So as you can see, we've got that spider. So now if we do a Scrapey list, we should see the spiders created. There you go. We have the spider. So now we can actually open up the spider. So in our folder, we have the chocolate scraper project. We have spiders. If we open this up, we can see we've got the chocolate spider. Right now, this is very simple. It's just got the name of the spider, the domain that it's going to start scraping and the domain that we're going to be scraping. We're going to update the start URL because instead of just scraping the home page, we're actually going to scrape the product page where all the chocolates are actually based. As you can see here, we've got our products page and let's just take the URL chocolate.co.uk forward slash collections forward slash all and we're going to just put that in here and save that. So for the next part, we're going to actually select the products on the page and reference which titles, which prices we want in our spider. So we've got our products page here with all the different products and to double check that we're getting the right information, we're going to open up our Scrapey shell first of all. So let's go back to our console terminal and we're just gonna type in Scrapey shell to start the Scrapey shell and as you can see, that's working correctly. Now we're going to do fetch. So fetch, open bracket, and we're going to paste in the URL of the products page. And just close the bracket and press enter. And we can see that the scrapey shell has just crawled chocolate.co.uk. So now if we go back to our products page and we right click on the first product in the list, we'll have the dev tools come up 
And as you can see, as we hover over the different pieces here, different parts are selected on screen. So let's just select one that we want. So let's just, so we've got this one. And as you can see here, there's a product item is actually the name of the HTML element. So product item is one thing that contains the price, the name and the image. So that's very useful. So now it's got the class name here of product dash item. If we go back to our scrapey shell and we type in response dot CSS and we put in product item like we saw there, then we can see that this is referenced all the product items on the page. So now let's just get the very first one. So we can get the very first one by just appending get onto what we just typed out. And this returns all the HTML for just that first item. So as we can see there, there's a sale price of 9.95. Now let's actually look at how we can extract the product details such as the name, the price, and the image from the HTML that we've got in the scrapey shell. So to do that, first we're going to get all our products into a variable called products. So we're going to do this by doing what we just did here. So it's products equals response.css product item. So then that just means that all the product items are going to go into a variable called products. And we can now put a single product by itself. So we're just going to do product is equal to products. And then we're just going to put the first item, which is with the zero inside of the square brackets. So we now have the first product is going to be inside the product variable. So the next thing we need to do is we need to look at how we can extract just the text, the, the name from this first item here. So we're just going to right click on that, go to inspect. And as we can see here, the class name is product item meta underscore underscore title and that's got our 100% dark chocolate flakes in there now so when we hover over it it's selected there so that's definitely what we need and that is the class name which we need and that's also contained within an a tag an a html tag which is also useful for us to know so if we go back to our scrape your shell we can try out and see does that work so we're going to just type product dot css and we're going to do a because it's the a tag and then we're going to go back over here copy and paste the class name so it's a and then dot the class name and then double dots, double dots, and text. And just writing get at the end of that. So that's given us the text, which is exactly what we need. The next thing we're going to look at getting is the price. So to do that, we're going to go back to the website, right click on the price, see here that it's within a span HTML tag and the class is price. Now within that, there's another span with sale price, but we're going to look at how we can get rid of that in a second. So let's go back and we're just going to type in product.css and we're going to put in span.price. So that gets us the HTML that is within span.price and it does have the price there within that HTML. So now we're going to look at how we can get rid of the unwanted HTML stuff and just get the price out of it. So we're going to actually 
just add a replace function at the end of that. And inside that, we're going to put all this text up to the £9.95. And we're going to paste that in. And we're going to say that we want to replace it with nothing. So we just do comma and then nothing. And let's try that. And there you go. So we have £9.95 and we have span at the end. So let's just do another replace at the end of that. And we're going to just put in the closing span at the end. So oh, we just forgot to put in what we wanted to the second part, which is just the, we want to replace the span with nothing. And there you go. So we've got the, the price at the very end, which is perfect. But last of all, let's get the product URL. So if we hover over the name, for example, as we can see, any anything with an A tag contains the URL. So it contains forward slash products, forward slash 100 dark chocolate flakes. So if we click the text, it brings us to the actual product page. So that contains the link, which we can use. So let's just right click on the name and we have the ahref here. So now we can just test that it works. Product.css and then that was contained within a div. So it was contained, so we've got div here, then we've got a and our div and then it was product item meta for the class. So let's try that. P product item meta and then a let's just do get on that see what we get back so yeah so that's mostly correct we've got the the a tag there but we just want this part here forward slash products 100 dark chocolate flakes so to do that we're just going to instead of get we're going to do a t t r i b for attribute and square brackets href so that gives us just what's in this href attribute here which is exactly what we need so we've got the name the price and the url for one product now that we've got the title the price and the url let's look at how we can actually put that into um, our spider code here and run the spider to extract all those details from the page so the parse function is the function that will be run as soon as the scrapey spider starts up and goes to this start url page so what we're going to do is we're going to put the code in here and we're going to put in exactly what we had earlier products equals to response dot css and then the product item so it's exactly what we had in our scrapey shell we're actually going to just exit out of our scrapey shell so we can run our spider in a second next we want to loop through the products all the products that are on the page so to do that we just do for product in products so saying for each product that is in the list of products we want to do something and what we want to do is we want just to for the moment return the data so we're going to do that with the yield and we can just remove the pass there and we're going to say okay we want the name to be what we typed in earlier so let's see if i can quickly scroll back up and pick it up here so we've got the product and yeah so we've got the price so you can ignore that so we've got the price the price is what we pasted into our scrapey shells earlier product.css the span.price and the replacement stuff so we're just going to paste that whole line oh copy that paste that whole line in here and the last part is the url 
and for that we had the URL here. Let's make sure we copy that, paste that in there. And the only thing we need to make sure is that we have a comma at the end. And the name, let's just scroll back, was this line here of product.css. So it's very handy. Using the scrapey shell, we've figured out all the pieces we need, and we can paste all those pieces into our spider code. So that's going to loop through all the products and it's going to return the name, price, and URL. Now let's just try and run that. So let's do a scrapey list first to make sure our spider is there. Perfect. Now let's do a scrapey crawl. Chocolate spider. And that'll run our spider. There it goes. Starting up OK. There's all the data coming through. All the names, the price, and the URL. It's got a bit of a summary here. You can see the information such as the item scrape count, the number of requests, if there was any errors, all that is, is dumped out at the end usually. Since most people need the data to actually be saved in a file and not just output to the terminal, we're going to look at how we can save the data in a JSON format and in a CSV to be opened in um, Excel or anything like that. So let's just do it in JSON format first. So we'll just do scrapey crawl again. The spider name, chocolate spider. Chocolate, uh, chocolate spider. Dash O for output. And then we're going to do my data dot JSON. And enter. And there it goes. And as we can see, mydata.json has been populated here, and it's got the name, the price, and the products for each of the products that are on the page. That's great, so now let's do the same thing again, except this time, instead of dash o mydata.json, we're gonna do mydata.csv, and enter. And we now have a CSV file which can be opened in Excel or Google Sheets or whatever you need. And that's also populated with everything in here. For the last bit, we're just going to look at how we can navigate to the next page since our website actually has, as you can see here, the website has several pages of product data and just scraping the first page isn't exactly the most useful thing we can do here. We want to get all the data from the website and we want to go from page one to page two to page three to page four, etc. Okay, so let's just start up our scrapey shell again. So we can test out uh, the URL. We're going to do our fetch and paste in the URL and that's going to go into the response and then we're going to do response.css and we're going to try and find the URL. So let's go down to the bottom of the page and right click on this arrow here to go to the next page. So that is an a tag again, a HTML tag, and the class is pagination underscore underscore nav dash item. So that should do it. And the rel there is rel equals next. So let's try and get that. Sometimes you can actually reference the tag with rel equals next, because if we look here, this also is an A tag for the number four and the number three before it. And they also have pagination underscore nav item. So 
if we just do a and then pagination underscore nav item it's going to actually select the five of these at the bottom plus the arrow so we need to actually be more specific than that so the rel equals next makes it super specific and we can then use that to get what we need which is this href uh, url here collections forward slash all page two so let's go ahead and type that in to our response.css in the scrapey shell so let's just do rel equals to next and we're just going to space and then double dots double dots a ttr to reference the attribute and href actually i think it's just href like that and we just need dot get at the end and let's see yeah so that gets us collections all page two so it gets us onto page two which is perfect so now let's actually put that into our code so uh, we're going to loop through all the products on the page for product in products and the next step is we're going to do next page so we're going to reference the next page is equal to response dot well we've got it right here so let's just copy and paste so copy that and I'm going to paste that in here and then we're going to say if the next page is not none so if there's always a next page button to click on then go to the next page so it's going to go go through all the products and then look for next page if it's there click on it and move on to the next page so then we're just going to do uh, the next page url next page url is equal to and then we're just going to do http https and www.chocolate.co.uk so the reason we're doing that is because that wasn't actually in front of the collections all page two here so we need to actually reference that first and then we're going to say plus next page so that's just going to append on this forward slash collections part at the end so then that's the full url that we have and we can just tell it now to follow that um, page so we'll do yield response dot follow and next page url and the callback which is what needs to be run once we actually get to that page is going to be the self.parse which means it's just going to do everything all over again so once it gets to the next page it calls itself it's the parse function again within the spider and it runs through again so basically it keeps going keeps going keeps going until it reaches the end so let's save that let's exit our uh, scrapey shell we just exit and the brackets and let's run our spider again so let's do run scrapey crawl and we'll do it into json format why not it's a bit easier to read um, and enter so let's just let that run through and see did it work so the item script count is 87 and the first time around it was 24 item script so it looks like that worked correctly now if we open up um, my data.json as we can see here there's 88 lines so we've got the full flow working correctly it's taking all the data we need from all the pages and in the next part of the series we are going to look at how to clean any of the data that's dirty for example for the prices we could remove the pound sign and we could do a conversion to euros or dollars and how to deal with edge cases such as something being sold out so there's lots of ways to deal with that and to make sure that your data 
is cleaner and more correct than it would be otherwise. So I hope you now have enough to start scraping with the Python scrapey framework and that you can scrape any basic HTML sites like the one we just did, which is a working e-commerce site. And if you have any other questions or comments, please leave them below and we'll be sure to get back to you and make other videos if necessary. Thanks guys.